Russia has been discreetly helping the Philippines. But why? What exactly does Russia stand to gain from this relationship? Is it merely a piece in the global chess game between superpowers, namely China, Russia, and America? Is Russia sincerely trying to help the Philippines or using it as a tool against America? It's widely understood that the Philippines is a close ally of the United States in Asia. Perhaps Russia's goal is to weaken this alliance which could reduce America's power in the Asia-Pacific region. To understand why Russia and America are after the Philippines, let's first understand why the Philippines is such an important country in Asia. An American congressman once said that the Philippines is super important because it's like the last big piece of land in the ocean. He said that since our trade with Asia is going to get bigger, the Pacific Ocean is going to be important to us. He believed that Europe would start making most of its stuff it needs and getting what it wants from its colonies. So where are we going to sell our extra stuff? The answer, according to him, is China. China is closer to us than it's to England, Germany or Russia who are big in trade. These countries have set up bases near China, but having the Philippines means we have a place right at the entrance to Asia, making it easier for us to sell things there. In addition to opening the door to the China market and being a place where US manufacturers could sell goods, the Philippines was also an important site of production of raw materials, especially sugar and could be shipped back to the American market. And as it's in other Pacific territories, the US also established military and naval bases in the islands to protect its interests and expand its sphere of influence. The Philippines lies at a vital maritime crossroads through which passes more than half of the world's shipping tonnage. And 80% of crude oil shipments headed to Japan and South Korea. The strategic importance of the Philippines is enduring. Over a century ago, the famed US naval strategist Alfred Thayer talked about the importance of the Philippines, referring to it as the narrow seas. For much of the 20th century, it played a central role in the US strategy as a key logistics node for American air and naval forces and its geostrategic linchpin between East and Southeast Asia. Now that we understand the importance of the Philippines to America in containing its biggest rival, China, I'm sure you know that four new military bases were added to the existing military bases, and they're scattered throughout the country. I normally don't ask viewers to subscribe, but I've noticed that some viewers might have the intention of subscribing and liking their video but forget to do so. Take a moment and hit the subscribe and like button. It doesn't cost you anything, including in a province facing the flashpoint, South China Sea. There are some in the north, there are some around Palawan, and there are some further north, and there are some further south. The US has asked for access to military bases in the provinces of Isabella, Zambales, and Cagayan, facing north towards Taiwan and on Palawan in the southwest, near the disputed Spratly Islands in the South China Sea. The US has committed $80 million to infrastructure investments at the five bases. Furthermore, America will create two naval bases in the Cagayan province, the northern portion of the Philippines archipelago that lies directly across from Taiwan in the South China Sea. Another military base called Melcor de la Cruz will be located in Gamo Isabella, also on the Luzon Point. A fourth military base will be located at Balagbak Island in the province of Palawan, located in the western part of the Philippines, near the Spratly Islands, a major archipelago in the disputed South China Sea. Let's look at the relationship between Russia and the Philippines, and what's in it for Russia to help the Philippines. Russia had been interested in developing ties with states in Southeast Asia as early as the 19th century. The Russian Empire's interest in establishing relations with Southeast Asian countries stemmed from its need to ensure food, 
and raw supply, security in the Russian Far East, as communication between the Far Eastern part of Russia and its European side was significantly difficult. The Soviet Union rose to power and replaced the Russian Empire after the October Revolution and the Russian Civil War. Contacts between Soviet Russia and the Philippines were maintained through Kami Intern and Profi Intern and the Communist Party of the United States since the Philippines was a colony of America. Due to the restrictive policy of the American colonial administration of the Philippines against communists, the relations between the Philippines and the Soviet Union gradually were stifled. At the time, the Philippines had been considered the United States' strongest ally in Southeast Asia and a reliable partner during the Cold War. But the Marcos administration believed that America was going to lose the Vietnam War and thus saw the need to establish ties with the enemy. When the Soviet Union dissolved in 1991, the Philippines under President Cory Aquino formally recognized the Russian Federation and sought to normalize ties between the two nations and to bolster trade and cultural exchanges. In 2012, President Aquino of the Philippines made a historic visit to Russia during the APEC summit. In 2019, after full normalization of ties since the first Aquino government up to the Duterte government, Russia has been supplying the Philippines with drones, sniper rifles, surface-to-air missiles to the Philippines. During the Duterte administration, there were plans to buy Kylo-class diesel electric submarines. In January 2017, two Russian Navy ships docked at the Manila South Harbor for a goodwill tour aimed at bolstering Philippines-Russia relations, especially in security. In October 2017, the Philippines and Russia signed a contract for the delivery of 16 MI-17 medium lift helicopters. This deal marked a significant milestone in the defense relationship between the two countries and was part of the broader efforts by the Philippines to diversify its sources of military equipment. The MI-17 helicopters manufactured by Russian helicopters were intended to bolster the capabilities of the Philippine Air Force in various missions, including troop transport, search and rescue operations, and disaster response. Philippine President Marcos sourced military helicopters from America after scrapping a 215 million deal to buy 16 similar heavy lift helicopters from Russia over fears of sanctions. Given that Russia was the primary source of military equipment for the Philippines during the Duterte administration, which pursued an independent foreign policy, and now that the current president is pro-America, it would be advantageous for Russia if the relationship between America and the Philippines were to worsen. With the relationship between Russia and the Philippines not as good as before under the new president, Russia might try a sneaky plan to help the Philippines secretly. Let's look at a hypothetical scenario where Russia secretly helps the Philippines. Russia secretly helps the Philippines get high-tech weapons. They do it in sneaky ways like using hidden connections and secret meetings to avoid getting caught. They send these weapons using tricky routes to dodge checks by authorities. Russia does not want anyone to know they're behind it, so they use fake companies and middlemen to handle the deals. In the Philippines, some government officials and military officials help keep it all hidden. Both Russia and the Philippines benefit from this secret partnership. Russia gets to expand its influence in the region and weaken America's hold there. The Philippines gets powerful weapons to defend itself and claim its rights in the disputed areas. As they keep working together in secret, tensions rise and the world waits to see if their hidden actions will change the balance of power in the region. Do you think Russia will help the Philippines? If you made it to the end of the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button before leaving.